Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper. We head out to Pennsylvania. One of my favorite interviews is a young man named Frank Molinero. He joins us now. Does the gor- Gorilla Hulk. Frank, how are you, buddy? Good, good. Happy Friday. Starbucks. That's where yep. you're at. Okay, so here's the deal. You, you were at Rutgers and seemingly very happy there. But what Rutgers did, they needed you to do some coaching, too. You wanted to, to wrestle full time. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was there for two years, and uh, it was a really good experience with coaching and, you know, just getting getting my foot in the door as far as like learning outside of college. But, uh, you know, I wanted to compete full time, and you know, I started in October and started making some progress. And you know, I'm kind of an extremist, so I had to put myself in the best situation. Which you is back here. You are our Adidas wrestler of the day and our interview of the day. Uh, you're a sponsored athlete now, man. How does that feel? It's good, man. It's it's really given you know people like myself and other wrestlers an opportunity to compete full time and you know still have a family on the side and you know make it all work together. So you know without those sponsorships, you know, none of this is possible. Now you have a shirt on. Tell us who the shirt is. Besides Adidas, oh. you've got a couple other sponsors. Who's on your shirt? This is uh, MHP Maximum Human Performance. Uh, they're a supplement company actually located in uh, right by West Caldwell, New Jersey. And uh, I've been talking to them for over a year, and uh, you know we're at, we're to the stages about making a deal and trying to get them involved in wrestling and trying to you know bring them to the table. Who's that guy there? Uh, Gerard Dente. Gerard Dente. Dente, yeah, he's a he's a real good guy. He's from New Jersey, and uh, you know he he wants to help me out, and you know I want to help him out bring him into wrestling you know i think they have a lot of good products you know as far as you know recovery supplements and a lot of them are tested and legal and there's plenty of stuff that you know wrestlers can take if they want to you know recover and get it going is that the is that the danger you professional athletes run into uh you always hear of people uh for example last year we had a couple indians uh, p dirty uh we've had one of our own on some kind of a, I don't even know what it was. Uh, I don't know that it was ever identified publicly. But is that you have to be pretty careful, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and there, USA Wrestling does a good job of you know making everybody aware of you know, what you can take, what's banned. They're constantly sending reminders, emails. Uh, Jane Gibson, she's the nutritionist for wrestling. She does a really good job of you know kind of telling you like this is where you can go and look and see what's banned, what's not. You know, here's. Here's the dangers of taking this, and a lot of it's there's a lot of small little things that if you don't pay attention, and you know you could end up fa- failing a drug test for something as simple as uh, energy drink. Yeah, and that's not. I mean, obviously we got to do our homework. We got to be smart about this. This is the business we're in. This is what we do. Yeah. We're talking with the uh, the Gorilla Hulk, Frank Molinero, who's an NCAA champ for Penn State, a four-time NCAA All-American, two-time Big Ten champion. Um, most recently, let's talk about him. The World Team Trials didn't do the best there at 70 kilos. I thought you looked a little bit slow. You took fourth. What were your thoughts about uh, the performance at the World Team Trials? Did you feel a little sluggish? Uh, no, you know, I thought uh, overall I felt pretty good about it. It was a good experience uh, wrestling those bigger guys and just getting out there and competing. I think, uh, you know, I did a really good job of getting everybody's legs and you know, I think what's separating me from, you know, being dominant and, you know, being not taking these third places all the time is just learning the small tricks to finishing. It's small tricks with just, you know, a couple of things I got to work on here and there as far as technically, but you know, I think my effort, strength, conditioning, and, and explosiveness is where it needs to be. But, you know, I just got to keep getting better technically and keep getting that experience and figuring out what works for me out there and what doesn't work. Frank the Tank joins us. He's back at Penn State after a year at Rutgers. How valuable was that year you spent at Rutgers? It was good. You know, it helped me It helped me learn a lot as far as kind of looking at it from a different angle, coaching the guys. Uh, you know, it also helped me realize how much I love to compete and how much I, you know, would hate myself if I hadn't given myself an opportunity to compete full time and try to make make the world team and win some world titles. There's a lot of folks out there that want to see you compete. There's a lot of people that look at you and go, "Oh my God, this guy doesn't have to work too hard to grit, you know, to get the frame, to get the build he's got. He's it's all natural." Uh, yeah, Frank. They don't know how hard Frank runs. He, they don't know what kind of cardio program he 
he or how much he's got to cut. You know, managing your weight is a big deal every day, yeah. not just on the way to a weight. You've got to really be smart about what you put in your body. Yeah, I mean, just the weight cut this year at 65 was it was it was a pretty heavy weight cut for me. You know, I was pretty big, pretty dense. I had a lot, I had a lot of muscle before I started cutting the weight, and you know, it's really been pretty rigorous kind of shrinking my body down you know got you know my buddy Jarrett uh, Platt he's been helping me out as far as dieting he's giving me some good pointers you know my wife helps me cook grocery shop all that kind of stuff so I always have somebody helping me out which is good but uh you know it's just a lot of work but it's what I love to do you know, I love to wake up I love to train every day I love to grind the cut and weight and all that kind of stuff so you know, I'm just grateful that this is what I get to do every day full time now, a lot of people may not understand this. Eating healthy is actually more expensive than eating uh, junk. <laughs> yes, huh? it Am I is. wrong? <laughs> it definitely is. Fresh fruits it and vegetables. Is. Take me take me down the uh, grocery aisle when you go shopping. What are you buying and why are you buying it? Uh, well, I buy a lot of fruits and vegetables. You know, I make a lot of fruit and vegetable smoothies in the morning. I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables. Um, a lot of protein, salmon. Uh, we do a salmon night. We do steak night, beef night, um, turkey, turkey, beef, and all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of, you know, a lot of fruits and vegetables and, uh, you know, just, just protein shakes in the morning and at night just for recovery, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's complete. I try to, you know, do as much as I, I can control to help myself. So, so whether it's grocery fat, shopping, fat cooking. Is it fat? Is it primarily fat and salt free? Yeah, it's low, low fat, low salt. Yeah, I don't try, you know, I don't like to have too much salt. I like to, you know, not when I'm cutting, I take the salt down. But when I'm not cutting, I don't really pay too much attention to it because I'm drinking so much water and working out so much. Right, and, and drinking water, that's that's another big deal. Blue 04 Water is one of the sponsors of this interview, by the way. Rehydrate the right way. Put those electrolytes back in your body. Oxygenate the blood that goes through your body, and you can be strong just like Frank the Tank Molinero. Um, most recently, you were at the Pan Ams, and you wrestled there at 65 kilos. Five kilo differential than, than when you were at the World Team Trials where you took fourth. You took third overall. Uh, in, in your weight class, and, and that allows you to stand third overall in the standings for Team USA. Uh, is that where you need to be right now? Would you like to be second or even first at 65? Where do you see it? Uh, you know, I, I see myself as number one, you know, and I missed that opportunity this year at the World Team Trials, but, you know, I put a ton of work in as far as this was my first year ever competing freestyle. And, uh, you know, I wrestled in every tournament I could. I went to every training camp I could on top of coaching. And, you know, now there's no more you know, noob exception rule or anything like that. So, you know, if I'm not number one next year, then I, then I failed and I didn't put enough hard work in. When you say you didn't put enough hard work in, do you bang yourself up on that deal? Do you, do, does that kind of stuff bother you? Uh, it doesn't bother me. You know, it motivates me. It keeps me going. You know, if I'm not... Now, even if I was number one, I would, you know, still find something that would motivate me and something to push me harder. But, you know, being number three, I, I do feel like I have a chip on my shoulder still, and I've always felt like I've had a chip on my shoulder my whole career. So, you know, th there's no better motivation than that that feeling. See, I don't get that a chip on your shoulder your whole career. All I've seen really is a young man that just really wants to get out there and get after it and win. Um, it's there is a purity to your wrestling that is hard to find in a lot of guys. There, you, the Thanks. love of the sport and the intensity with which you wrestle compound that, if you will, with uh, the complexion of the game. In other words, how complex is your game? Your your detail to 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 uh, uh, technique is phenomenal. Thank you. Where does that come from? Is it just internal? Is it coaching? Is it? Are you just a good listener? Uh, you know, I, I would like to believe that I'm pretty coachable. I think now, you know, coaching for two years, it, I think that's helped me kind of be a better athlete as far as being able to be coached a little bit better because you kind of see see it from the other side. But, you know, I think I've been so fortunate from, you know, when I was in clubs when I was a kid to my high school coaches, you know, John Stout, and, you know, my college coaches, that their results speak for themselves. And, uh, you know, I'm been around great people and I'm you know competing around great people now and competing with great people so 
you know, I've always been fortunate enough to have a pretty good influence. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I'll compete in everything I do, you know, whether it's golf this afternoon or wrestling practice or, you know, 500 run me with my wife at home. I just love to compete and I love to win. So, you know, that's that's big motivation for me is winning. Your wife told me she could beat you at Rummy anytime she wants. <laughs> uh, my wife's pretty com my wife's pretty competitive too. She was a <laughs> Division One gymnast, so uh, she doesn't she doesn't how, let me how win tall in anything. Is she? She's five six five seven. She's so pretty she's, tall she's compared pretty, to me. Yeah, I was gonna say she can she can <laughs> reach. You don't even know it, and she's sliding cards in her slippers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she may be cheating there. You got to watch. If she's winning a lot, she may be altering her ability to win. So be yeah, careful. I'll let, let her win a couple times. Are you really? You're nice. <laughs> You're the Pennsylvania nice guy. Yep. Um, I want to ask you about uh, wearing the stars and stripes on your uniforms, um, being able to represent the United States. Not everybody gets that opportunity. How special is that for you? You know, it's it's real special it's basically the centerpiece of my life right now and i think that's you know something i think about on a daily basis so i really i mean that's part of it isn't it it's, there's a lot of heart that goes into into what you're doing you get a, it's, we get, you wrestle a cuban you wrestle somebody from brazil or canada or wherever and it's got to be pretty special indeed to to wear the stars and stripes and, and know that you're wrestling for all those that didn't make it yeah, no, it's awesome to be able to represent your country in you know any sport or whatever you're doing. All right, so it's penalty box time. You ready for it? Yeah. All right, penalty box. So let's say that there are guys on tour with you that uh, I'm not asking you to throw them under the bus. Just put them in the penalty box, okay? Penalty box, they can still come out you know, after three minutes or whatever. So into the penalty box goes who and for why. Let's say uh, bad manners on, on a trip. Uh, bad haircuts, uh, poor choice of clothing. Uh, who goes in the penalty box? What's bothering you on your last trip from the Pan Ams? Uh, showing up to weigh-ins seven hours early, down at flat weight. Okay, all right. So who who made that decision? I don't know. I, I think it's a, it was a nobody really took full responsibility for it. So <laughs> I don't really even know who to blame for it. But uh, you know they. The guys got a pretty good laugh because, you know, uh, Zach and Zach Ray and all those guys, because I was, as soon as they told me weigh-ins were at 5.30 and we were we had left at 10.30 and I got there, my face was just, it looked like you told me that I had different parents. I couldn't believe it. I was like, you mean to tell me I just got down to flat weight six pounds that day and I ha I'm not weighing in for seven hours? And they're like, yes. And I was just like, oh, God. So Zach it Ray, who else was me. with you? I was Clayton Foster, Zach Sanders, Jordan Burroughs, uh, Hunter Steber, Andrew Hochstrasser, Zach Ray, and Daron Wynn. All right, who that all was good, went right, with right you? Right off the top who of all, my head. Who all, nice job out of you. Who all? Yeah. Went, you're using those smart vegetables. So who all yep. uh, on on uh, of those people you mentioned? Who all went to the early weigh-in, so to speak? Everybody. Everybody. But uh, you know, some of the guys weren't cutting weight, so. You know, they were they were getting a little taco stand action. So, you know, all right, you mentioned salmon, uh, and this is pr about yeah. probably the oddest interview you're going to do all day. Uh, when you make your salmon, I got to believe you fry it or grill it. Bake it. Bake it. Okay, so nice Bro uh, broil. Broil. And then, what do you put on it? And surely you can't be putting butter on it. No, actually, I do a little secret recipe. I do Dijon mustard with uh, brown sugar, and then I coat the salmon, lather it up with that, and uh, put it on the high rack for 20, 15 minutes until it's, you know, glazed over on the top and warm on the inside. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Making your mouth water right now, isn't it? No, I, I got a too full right now. I ate Starbucks already. <laughs> so what would you have at Starbucks? We're going to move on from here. So what would you have from Starbucks? I, I don't even know what half the stuff means on the menu, so I just, whatever looks like it's good, and I had two espresso shots. Should a venti be a large? Shouldn't yes. they just say yes. screw it and just be large? Why do they have to be the arrogant ones? Because they're just trying to be fancy and smug and, you know. That doesn't work well with me. That doesn't work well with me. Does it work well with you? No, I'll oh, take no. my business to Dunkin' okay. Donuts after this. Cliff Fretwell gave you the nickname Gorilla Hulk. 
Um, yes, he did. What what caused that? Is it just something he said, Gorilla Hulk, that's you? I think it was uh, actually, I was wrestling at the Southern Scuffle my junior year, and I was wrestling Gillespie, um, Gregor Gillespie's brother, and I think I was, like, picking him up or something and yelled, and he was doing the broadcast at the time for Flow Wrestling, and I think he had said the Gorilla Hulk, and it kind of just stuck with me, and he kept calling me the Gorilla Hulk, and you know, that year he made shirts and stuff at NCAs, and, you know, it's kind of just stayed with me since then. You've got a website. It's called GorillaHulk.com. How, in God's name, were you able to grab that moniker on a uh, web that has uh, obviously been around over 20 years now? Uh, I, I can't believe it was open. Yeah, me neither. You know, Justin Batch, he does, uh, all, he does my website for me. So, you know, he was looking at it, and he said this was an option, and, you know, I want to be the Gorilla Hulk. So he, he snagged it up for me, and Justin's done a great job. Uh making the website and he's made some other websites for uh david and ed and jake varner and coach kale and jordan burrow so you know he, he does a really good job and people keep coming back to him because you know i like like what he does let's talk a bit about new york city you and i were there as a matter of fact we had some uh, pretty good conversations after the fact you were not 100 percent healthy when wrestling uh bubba jenkins at the last uh, 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 grapple at the garden where you, you were uh, I think you'd had a shot in your neck I think there were some things that were bothering you can you better describe that yeah you know it, it is what it is I, you know I was bumping up a weight class and it was kind of on a short notice because uh, I think Kyle Dake had broke his hand over wrestling Sargush or overseas and uh, Nick gave me the opportunity and you know at the time I had just hurt my neck and ended up getting a trigger point injection in my neck and you know, we were asked me to go up a weight class. I took the opportunity and didn't work out. But, uh, you know, it, it, I'd say it left me sour for a while. You know, Bubba's, me and Bubba aren't best friends. So, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, he's really relished in, in my defeat. So, you know, it's if there was an opportunity to wrestle him again, you know, I would wrestle him anywhere, anytime. You know, at Am any weight class at this point. Second. Are we talking about a potential rematch of uh, the Gorilla Hulk and uh, Sweet Child of the City, Bubba Jenkins, at uh, at Grapple at the Garden Three coming up? I would wrestle him anywhere. Anywhere. You know, if you set it up tomorrow, I'd wrestle him. You know, he he beat me, and you know, I, 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 we won a fair match, but uh, you know, it wasn't 100, percent I was bumping up 15 pounds and I had been off the mat for a week so you know it, it's not an excuse but you know True. there's no excuse if I wrestle him again True that okay so by the way fans you can keep up with uh, Frank Molinero online at GorillaHulk.com you can keep up with him on Facebook Twitter, Instagram uh, all that you can make donations to his career yeah he's a hard working athlete he's doing what he's doing he's married uh, he's an awesome guy uh, been around uh, uh, State College for a long while now I think I remember doing an interview with you on a bus. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, my yeah. freshman year, probably. Probably. When I was living in the dorms. <laughs> wow, that's a long time ago. Yeah, but you know what? It's one of my favorite ones because even then, you were real. There's no no ulterior motives, no great expectations. You just wanted to get out there and wrestle. You know, yeah. I, I go back to your 2012 year, that season, man, 33-0. and 0. It's a good year. Yeah, but... It just shows me the kind of heart you've got in the face of incredible competition. So, what's up next for you in, in terms of preparing yourself for a run? Because what, uh, you may not be the number one guy at the World Team uh, at the World uh, Championships, but Rio is still very real, and it's coming up quicker than you and I think. Rio de Janeiro, twenty sixteen. Yeah, you know I think Rio is the is the big picture, but two thousand fifteen World Championships in Las Vegas and. You know, I don't want I don't want to have to wait next year and say, well, I got next year for Rio, or I got. No, I think my urgency is extremely high right now. You know, my wife, you know, left her job as an assistant coach at Rutgers, and you know, she's changed her life to to help support me, and so have a lot of other people. So, you know, my urgency is extremely high, and I, you know, I want to make the world team next year, but I want to win a world championship. I don't okay. want to just make the team. No, that's, not, that's not how I'm training right now. So you want to make it, and you want to do it the right way. You, no questions asked. You are that guy. Yep. Okay. Yep. And uh, 
Does that pump you up when I when I introduce you? Like, uh, for example, you were an MMA fighter. Is that kind of a build that you kind of get, you know, just a little bit bigger? Hulk up. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, people people ask me, like, well, you know, what do you do for a job? And I tell them I wrestle, and they just kind of look at me like I'm crazy. You do what? Well, what do you do for real? It's like, wrestle. <laughs> What do you want to tell the, the sponsors, uh, your fans, the people that have been, you know, they say nice things about you uh, uh, on the Internet, and the chat rooms, whatnot. What do you want to tell those folks? You know, I really don't think I could thank those people enough because I was telling you before, you know, they're the people that have given me this opportunity. Um, you know, Adidas, I've been with Flips since, you know, day one. Me and Don Bruchetta have a good relationship. He's a yeah. good friend of mine. Um, you know, Cliff Fretwell, he's, he's made all my singlets. He's been helping me since way back when when I was in college, you know, with with everything he could. And, uh, you know, wrestling my shoes, um, super, super good organization uh, with Joe Butler and his son, Joey. Yeah. You know, they've, they've stepped up to the table and helped me. And, you know, now I'm, I'm hoping to, you know, close this deal with uh, Maximum Human Performance. You know, I like... I like their company. I like the people. You know, I like that they're from New Jersey, and you know, it's extremely, extremely grateful to even have any of these opportunities, and, and they make it so much easier to compete full time and have a family and support, you know, every aspect of my life, not just myself. And uh, you know, just like you said, I'm real grateful for him. You mentioned little Joe. He's a set, isn't he? Yeah, he's a really good kid. You know, he works extremely hard, and he loves the sport and following all the guys and. I feel like a bright future as a as a wrestler when he gets older. Frank, I'm looking forward to uh, next competition. Do you have any idea at this point where it's going to be? Uh, I'm not positive, but I know probably October is when I'll compete again. Um, I'll probably end up doing the NYAC again, and then I want to go to an overseas trip to uh, Russia, hopefully in October. So I'm trying to pin down which one's the best for me and which coach, which one Coach Burnett thinks is the best, and you know just keep getting better. How about, the, how about the coaching change from Jones to Burnett? What do you think of that? You know, I, I think it was a you know pretty cool move that Zeke Jones did going to Arizona State, and he's going to try to you know build a national championship caliber team, and I think he'll have a lot of success there. And you know, I was real happy when I heard Bruce got hired. You know, I knew I've known Bruce you know for quite some time. I considered going to uh, Annapolis after the season. It just wasn't really in place yet to where it is now, and. Uh, Bruce is a real good technician. You know, he studies the sport of wrestling more than anybody I know, and got to see that, you know, firsthand at the training camp in Arizona State. And uh, you know, that's what I need work on. I need work on technique, technique, technique. So, you know, the the more I can be around Bruce and at these training camps and try to continue to, you know, learn the sport and the, you know, the current what's working right now and what's not working is going to take me a long way. I think. Of the three principal coaches at Penn State. Who do you get the best technique advice from? And don't say Joe Bastardi because it's not even an option. Bastardi is not. He may. Joe, Joe Bastardi may be our pet, pen, Nittany Lion insider, but when it comes to the three primary coaches, who gives you the best technical advice day in, day out? You know, I, I look at it as not just technical, just kind of overall advice. And, you know, I'd say Cody Sanderson. You know, he's. I think Cody's one of the best coaches out there. You know, he works harder than anybody I know. I was a coach, so, you know, I know how, how much work goes into it, how much time goes into it. And Coach Cody is, he's on top of everything. You know, my workout, my recovery, you know, is my attitude good? Is my weight good? Is my strength good? Is my rehab good? So, you know, he really looks at the total picture for guys. He looks at, you know, every spectrum of what you have to do to be successful. And, you know, he takes a lot of pride in what he does. So, you know, he'll be on top of you about everything, and you know he wants to. He wants you to win, just as bad as you want to win. You know, I, I think Cody's one of the best coaches out there, so I'd say him. Couldn't disagree with you more. No, I yep. couldn't agree with you more. He's an outstanding guy, and uh, we're all lucky to have him in the sport. Penn State, obviously, very lucky to have him, but uh, he's on a mission, that's for sure. Frank, it's always good to talk to my man. I appreciate all the work you put into it. You seem uh, real healthy right now, real happy in a good place. And that's where you Thanks. need to be to, to rise to the top. And if anybody can do it, we know you can. So uh, there's a whole bunch of Gorilla uh, Hulk uh, fans back here in Iowa looking at you, and we're praying for you. Thank you.
All right, so for all of us at Takedown, I'm Scott Casper. In State College is Frank Molinero. Look for him online at GorillaHulk.com. This has been our Adidas In Focus Athlete of the Week, Frank Molinero.